in late 2020. There's a look at Lumen Field here in Seattle, Washington. Up next, a good one in the NFC West and a wild card rematch from a year ago as it'll be the San Francisco 49ers taking on the Seattle Seahawks. Well, now how about this return? He's to midfield. And he's going to wind up bringing this one inside the 45-yard line. The leading rusher among rookies a season ago. Here's Kenneth Walker. And a really good show of force there as he gets through for four tough yards. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. From the 38 now, here's a second down and six. Sticking with Walker on second down. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. Seven yards there and a first down. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play at any down. So first and 10 now from the 30. Now Gino. Looking left sideline, incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you had. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well and that one's incomplete. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and 10. Gino out a throw. And he's taken in by the tight end foot. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it with an eyelash, dropped at the one, and even 30 yards on a play that began back at the 30. Execution was one of their watchwords leading up to this one, and on that play, able to execute brilliantly here on this opening drive. And now some motion before the snap. And this will be our first penalty of the night's proceedings. Throwing now is Gino. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Gino Smith, a six yard touchdown run. And the Seahawks put the Knights' first points on the board as they take the early lead. Jason Myers now for the extra point. And this will give the Seahawks a 7 to nothing lead. Touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Returning from his end zone is Ray Ray McLeod. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. Here's the pro bowler, Christian McCaffrey. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That one is blown up by Jordan Brooks, the linebacker. That's uh, a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stump that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Another run with McCaffrey on second down. And mark him down way up close to the 40 at the 39. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. Pretty explosive run on that inside handoff. And when you're a runner of his caliber, you don't need a big crease. You really don't. But also what we're seeing is an offensive line 
has taken charge at the point of attack, aren't we? Not only are they controlling the initial contact, they're actually utilizing what they call the stream, the next two to three seconds to continue to move people. And he's brought down. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backside of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, hey, we got everybody cut. Oh, he just stuck out there, and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? They were able to do that there. Nice pick up on first down. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Another first down as they call his number again. He's got 15 yards here. Well, we know he can run the football too, but he's a good pass catcher. That's been on display here, Charles, on this opening drive. And we certainly have seen the benefits of what he did in the offseason, which was spend more time with wide receivers, working on routes, working on cuts, in order to make himself a more complete running back and even more of a threat downfield. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Purdy will look to throw again here. He'll get this out right here to McCaffrey. And here he'll get it down to the seven. But yet another completion here on this opening drive, and he's now perfect four of four to start. Pretty solid execution here. And how about how everyone's handled their nerves? Because you know what it's like to start a ball game. You're so amped up and ready to go, but sometimes the execution isn't there. They've been flawless so far. Well drilled, well prepared, and excited to start this game. Now Purdy. This is caught. Touchdown 49ers. Christian McCaffrey, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the 49ers respond to that opening drive touchdown with one of their own. A CD, you know he's got great options at wide receiver tight end, but there he looks to the backfield, and it results in a touchdown. I love how you laid that out. So many options. You maybe forget about some of the ones that you should be covering. And they made them pay with that one, didn't they? You forget about the guys in the backfield, they're eligible too. Team's had it. Each team has scored. 7 7 here as the kick's away. And he returns this to the 22. Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. And that last touchdown drive they had very balanced. How key is that balance? It's huge because most of the time when we talk about balance is run, pass, almost 50 50. But most of the times when you talk to offensive coaches, they say balance is we do what we want when we want to. And that means that they're ahead of the defense, keeping them on their heels. Yeah, they imposed their will on that last drive. Back to the air, Smith on second down. And he'll get this to his running back, D.J. Dallas. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 11 yards there and a first down for Seattle. I know this may be jumping the gun a little bit, but 7-7, seven to seven, they're flinging it around like crazy. Look at the drive that's going on here. Partner, we may have to start thinking about one of these defenses just holding someone to a field goal and maybe trying to get an advantage that way. Walker now on first and 10. Fights off the defender. And this will be a Seahawks first down as good running gets him to about the 44. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. Back to Walker on first down. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. 
They suspected that it was a power play up the middle coming at them, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. These two teams all tied after one. Second quarter now from Seattle, and it is the Seahawks with the football here. From the 46, here's second down and eight. As they've got it as we resume action. Here's Smith now on second down. That's to the rookie Jackson Smith and Jigba. The go down to gain of six, and third and one now. They'll try for the first with Walker. And not going to be able to push this forward. He runs into a wall right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. Remember, that was less than a yard. That was not a full yard. That defense, they were having none of it. Yeah, the surge the offensive line was seeking actually occurred on the other side of the ball. They reestablished the line of scrimmage and stuffed them. And here's Dixon to punt now as he gets this one away. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated grooves. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. A second and seven with our score tied at seven, but they're planning to change that soon. Only question, will they get three or six out of it? Out of the gun, it's going to be Samuel with a run. Down to the 30 after a gain of three. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Here's Purdy. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Niners first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. But they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. They'll get this into the hands of Ayu. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it's second down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, Using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher. Guys trying to get to the football. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. And partner to me, that one was all about timing. If he's there too early, it's going to be a pass interference call. If he's too late, it's a completed pass. He was Johnny on the spot on that one. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Purdy sets up to throw again. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have the 49ers first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. Well, they've certainly gotten him involved in this first half. And on third down, they looked his way again. And what a delight for his quarterback to find him and keep the drive moving. Purdy to throw it on first down. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. 
They're putting together a drive here in the final minutes of the half, but the coverage has been tight all game long, and they certainly want to keep them off the scoreboard here. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Throwing here, Purdy. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. But to this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Well, this drive, they're a perfect two of two on third down conversions, but they need a full ten yards here. Purdy will set up to throw it here. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. What an excellent defensive stand there in the red zone. Nice tight coverage. They certainly recognized how important it was to bring up fourth down here. So Purdy off and Moody on for the 49er field goal. From the left hand, should be a fairly easy one here. And his kick is indeed good. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. Now a hit and a loose football. And now this is scooped up by the 49ers. And he'll get this back down to about the 12-yard line. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Now a first down throw. It's Smith. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. He was trying to get that one out to his running back out of the backfield, but that one was red and timed perfectly, and they were able to break it up. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. Back to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. A gear for Walker running right. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 42 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. I think I saw a lot of shoulders just drop there. And what I mean by that is they finally were able to relax a little bit because that was an important play call. They needed to pick up that first down at this stage of the game. Yeah, couldn't afford another quick drive and out. On first down, it's Smith. And his throw is going to be incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, He's got second and third down to fall back on. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Now it's Smith. That's complete to D.K. Metcalf. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers 40. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. Charles, to move the chains that time, they had to complete it into double coverage, and they got it done. And it's never easy overcoming multiple defenders, but he sure made it look simple. Found the right spot to exploit and won his one-on-two matchup. And down he goes. The 49ers get there. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half.
Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Throwing is Smith. Setting up the screen here. This is Walker. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers, 19. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Back to throw, Smith. Left side here taken in by Metcalf. And the Seahawks are going to have a first and goal as he's taken down at about the eight-yard line. Just picking up yardage and bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field. And just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. Smith. And that will be incomplete. Four ticks left here on the clock. That's a tough spot for a running back coming out of the backfield because you know he's got to look for the football. Knowing full well, he's got a man coming his way full steam, and he broke that one up. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the left hash, a chip shot here. Myers' kick is good, and that will knot us up at 10. So they're able to make things level just before half and also leave very, very little time on the clock. And I love the way that you phrased that. Brought a little soccer into it, and that's really apropos considering they just kicked a field goal to tie things up. Second to go in the half as this one is away. So we have reached halftime here at a good one. 10-10 is our score. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports halftime report. Here's Jonathan Coachman. And ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half all tied on the scoreboard. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. It's a tie football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic. No need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. On second down, here's Debo. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. 13 yards there and a Niner first. Those are the type of runs that we did not see from him in the first half, but a good start to the third quarter. And I know what everyone's thinking that's watching this. They did a great job adjusting at the half. Oftentimes, you don't make adjustments. You just dial into your game plan a little bit better, and maybe they're starting to make some headway. Purdy. Got a man right side. It's McCaffrey. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And it's second down. Now that's the type of play that gives you a chance to win. Nothing forced downfield where you don't have a guy open. Swing it out to the back on maybe even check it down, whatever you want to call it. Gain of five. You're just trying to get four on first down. They're ahead of the chains now. A second down throw for Purdy. The first catch of the game for George Kittle. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. That his first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. 
They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. And that's why defensive coaches preach swarming to the football. It's usually going to take more than one guy to get that big man down. And it did right there. Multiple broken tackles, but they eventually get him down. A handoff for Samuel. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Purdy now to throw. Open man is Samuel, complete. And he's brought down in the red zone at the 18 after a gain of 18. First and 10. But they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game. And there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it. And no adjustment has been made to take it away. On first and 10, it's Samuel. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Getting had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. This second and four. Purdy looking to throw. And it's caught. Touchdown! Debo Samuel. A 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Niners have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. Well, forget about the weapons out wide. He knows he's got another weapon in the backfield of the passing game, Charles, and he utilized him perfectly on that play. And the offense coordinator showed me something on that play, Brandon, because so often during a game, our cameras find them looking down at their play sheets, and you wonder if they're absorbing anything. He had something specific in mind, and he went to it, and it worked well. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. And able to get this out to the 25. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. But Charles, you and I said in intermission, feels like we're set up for a good second half. Well, the other side scored, and now it's up to them to answer. How do they respond here with their first drive of the second half? Well, bottom line is they just saw the ball go in the end zone against their defense, and they saw what good offense looks like. They believe they've got a good offense as well. Run the best plays you've got to the top performers you have and try to move that ball down the field for an answering score. To throw on second down to Smith. And that'll be off the mark, too far out in front, and it's incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. Throwing on third down, Smith. And that is incomplete. Right, we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll punt it away for the second time. And 
had a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. They have to be pleased with the way that they moved the football thus far. And why wouldn't they be? Two touchdowns on a field goal in their first three possessions. They're playing so well right now, the field goal probably feels like a disappointment. I think the best offenses love to give the ball to their running backs in open space because they have the ability to make people miss, and they also have the ability to run over people. And if you do that throughout the game, after a while, they might just run through some of those tackles and go a long way. Well, we saw him shed a nice tackle on that play. On second down, McCaffrey. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. They'll try and pick it up with McCaffrey. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Give them the third down conversion, five yards on the play. Brandon, they're still in the lead, but momentum's certainly been going the opposite direction. So to me, that's a really important pickup there on third down. Try and regain some confidence, and you're right. They need to stem the tide a little bit. That certainly helped. They stay on the ground. McCaffrey again. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. First down, San Francisco, the pickup, 14 yards. Three quarters have come and gone. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Seattle, Washington. It's 49er football here. They've got the lead as well as we get set to start the fourth and final quarter. Now Purdy. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. They'll wind up getting just a yard out of it. And that's going to bring up second down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Back to throw, Purdy. He's got this complete to Ayuk on the out route. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 38-yard line. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Now on first down, it's Purdy. That's caught downfield by Kittle. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. 25 yards that time. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Up the gut, McCaffrey. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. This drive's taken more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. Purdy. That's over the middle and caught by Ayuk. So five yards here, five on the play. And now we've got a third and four. Here's Purdy. That is caught by the tight end, Kittle. Touchdown, 49ers. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the 49ers have opened up a two-touchdown lead here in this fourth quarter. You got it figured out by the goal line. This is where a tight end earns his money in the high traffic area. And he's able to work free in the middle of the end zone and grabs that one for a touchdown. Moody good with the extra point. And the lead now up to 14. Seahawks 10.
something together. So after the main field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. And this taken in at the goal line. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. The last series form, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. I think he's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and 10. Throwing now is Geno. They're unable to connect, but a late flag comes in. And the contact may have come too early. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and 10. Geno out a throw. He'll find Metcalf. Call it a gain of three on the play. And it'll be second down. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical. And you figure they only get one more shot after this. So a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You have the first one for the second one to even matter. Here's Smith. Going for Metcalf on the deep ball. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Going for the knockout blow right there. I think if I'm up two scores, I'd be worried about an interception. But playing this way is what got him this lead. So you may as well ride it out to the end. The offense on third down tonight, just one for three thus far. This is third and seven. Smith throwing again. To the sideline and incomplete. And I think we'll probably see him go for it here on fourth down. No reason not to. Down a couple of scores. They have to try and make something good happen. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Here we go on fourth. Smith. And that's caught. Inside the 30. Yeah, he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. I tell you what, this is not for the fate of heart right here. Fourth down, this is taking a big risk, but it's as good a play call as you can imagine. And the defense just not able to come up with the stop they needed. And this is not just a first down, but a big play as well. They should put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. To Jackson Smith and Chiba. Ten yards on the pickup. It's second and inches. Now second down in a few inches. Now Gino. This one into the hands of Metcalf. And the Seahawks are going to be set up with a first and goal here as the tackle made at the nine. Smith to throw. Left side here, that's the tight end fan. And he gets halfway home from the 10 to the 5 on a pickup of 5. He's been quiet today in the passing game, just his second catch. Yeah, and people have to come up with schemes to limit him. And, and what a lot of teams do, they'll double him, you know, use a linebacker underneath, a safety over the top. Sometimes they'll just take a corner, maybe their third corner if he's a bigger guy, and put him on a man. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So on everything here, this one's not over yet. 
sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way down the field. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like... Touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. The football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. Well, they can smell victory, partner. They can see it on the horizon, but certainly we're not done yet here. Defense still has three timeouts, and obviously this is a very slim lead they're holding on to. And let's face it, the easiest way to get this done Challenge your ground game, challenge your offensive line, your tight ends, your receivers, anyone who's going to lay down a block. Don't let there be penetration because they're going to stack the line of scrimmage and maybe bring extra people to the ball. If you can do that, make them burn their timeouts, run out the clock, life will be good. But if you really want to gamble a little bit, a quick play action, quick throw, might be able to get it done. Just make sure it's not incomplete and stop the clock. Well, now, after all of this, hang on here because he appears to be shaken up. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. Now a third and six. Here's a give to Samuel, and he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But... Let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. And because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. They didn't check off every box, but the most important one, got the clock stopped, getting out of bounds. They may be a little short of the first down, but I thought that was the key. This definitely four down territory at this point, but a critical third down here. Smith's going to throw it. And going to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to get out of bounds with the first down. So an ideal set of circumstances there. They move the chains, and they save that final timeout. What a pickup there, and maybe most importantly, he's able to get out of bounds and save their final timeout. So just a breakdown defensively, you've got to find a way to make that tackle in the field of play. Smith. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Well, they know anything less than a touchdown here at this late stage is going to be no good. They were going for it all right there. But it was just too hard to adjust to that one in the air, and it winds up incomplete. 
They'll try again here. Second and ten. Here's Smith. Left side here taken in by Metcalf. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers' 25-yard line. And remember, field goal does them no good in this situation. you got to think they should be taking some shots for the end zone soon. Well, this offense still has the one timeout here, remember. First and ten. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. Here's first down. Now it's Smith. And that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock. And now time for one final play that has to be obviously in the end zone. Can't wait to see what they call, but you want to get it to your best player. Sometimes you have to do it by formation. Move everyone to one side, and maybe he gets a one-on-one -on -one isolated on the backside. One last throw here for Smith. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Oh, and this is nervous time now. They decided to go for it right there. Fortunately, still a little bit of time left for another shot. But this one almost certainly has to be in the end zone. And now a tough spot here. This is third and ten. One final shot. They'll look to throw. Out to the right, he gets it to lock it. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers' 15-yard line. This one came right down to the wire, and CD they had that one final chance to try to navigate their way into the end zone, but couldn't get it done to avoid the loss. Yeah, and how about the defense there? Because while they had one final look at the end zone, the defense made sure they knew what they were doing on the last play, executed it flawlessly, and no flags. Because remember, if there's a defensive penalty, there's one play left in the game that the offense gets. They didn't allow that to happen. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say good night from Seattle.